Welcome to our channel, Around the Bend with Soki. I'm Mike, and we've been spending about the last seven weeks in Northwest Washington State. Uh, we've been visiting relatives, and uh, this particular uh, video is a compilation of some of the places that we've been. Initially, this first one is going to be a place called Semiamu. Uh, it's kind of an interesting name. It's a unique spit of land. It's a natural area right on the border of U.S. and Canada, as you can see in the vid in the uh, map here. It's uh, it's an area that is run by the Wapcom County Parks and Recreation, and it was about a 10-minute ride from our campground. As you can see from the Google Earth, it's located virtually on the thin edge. It's a very small strip of land with Semiamu Bay and the Strait of Georgia on one side, the protected Drayton Harbor on the other, and views of Mount Baker and the Twin Sisters Mountains in the distance. Semiamu Park offers 360 degrees of Pacific Northwest splendor. The Spit is a popular location for bird watchers, especially in winter months and during fall and spring migrations. The park itself has a very thin two-lane highway that runs all the way out to the end of the Spit, and there are several attractions out there. There's also a park at the beginning and walking trails that go all the way along the edge. You got water literally on both sides of the road. On high tide, it's a very narrow strip of land. It provides a whole new meaning to the tsunami signs that you see as you start to enter the area. And what you see here is the Samiamu Spit Coast Millennium Trail. Enjoy spectacular views across Drayton Harbor and Mount Baker. Bring binoculars to watch birds and seals. This segment of the Coast Millennium Trail spans the length of Samiamu Park and extends north to the Samiamu Resort area and the seasonal Plover Ferry to Blaine. The Semiamu Spit Trail is an easy eight-tenth of a mile loop. As you can see here, looking across the Strait of Georgia, you can see White Rock and Surrey, Canada on the other side. The region's tide pools, estuaries, and waterways attract thousands of bird species each year. 
This makes the area a true mecca for avid bird watchers, and it's exciting for casual bird lovers to see some impressive species. You can hike, bike, or walk among 300 natural acres, seek out bald eagles, blue herons, and a plethora of other birds on a self-guided bird watching tour. We took the drive down the spit initially just to see what was out here and found the Marina General Store and Cafe. The Marina Cafe, the Semiamu Chandlery, and the Semiamu Gift Shop is collectively known as the Marina General Store. The cafe offers soups, sandwiches, and daily specials, not to mention a tasty breakfast offering. A breakfast, sandwiches, bre biscuits, and gravy, and pastries. We went out and had lunch and enjoyed the view from the marina. The Semiamu Marina is located across from Blaine, Washington on the south side of the entrance to Drayton Harbor. On the north end is the sand spit that forms the southwest side of the harbor. It has slips for 300 boats and every amenity needed. Hiking, cycling, trails, golf course and country club are also available. At the heel on the spit, as you enter the roadway and the park, is the Alaska Packers Museum. The fish cannery industry played an integral role in the development of the Semiama region. You want to stop by the Drayton Harbor Maritime Museum, located just one mile from the resort, and a convenient stop off the beach shore. View of exhibits go all the way back to 1894, covering the history of the Alaska Packers Association and the Indian history of this particular area. Prominent in this museum is the Cannery Lodge. This former bunkhouse and office of the Alaska Packers Association Cannery is a unique venue for wedding receptions, meetings, events. It has scenic views of the entire region. Three buildings from the Alaska Packers Cannery Association were moved to the Semiamu Park in 1981, one of which now houses the APA Museum. Artifacts from the cannery display in the museum tell the story of fishing and cantering days gone by. The museum is operated by the Drayton Harbor Maritime Society. One of the artifacts on display is a thing called the Iron Chink. This thing processed over 30,000 salmon per day. It was patented with its racially charged name in 1905, revolutionizing the salmon cannery industry. Each of the nine iron chinks as Samiyamu to, to, took the place of 15 to 20 people on the fish line, jobs traditionally held by contracted Chinese laborers. Entering the machine from the right side, the Sam was beheaded by a curved knife, the tail and fins were removed, and a round saw blade at the top of the wheel split the body open. Wheels and brushes removed viscera and scrubbed the fish cavity. Water continually sprayed on the fish to aid the cleaning process, and this machine could process more than 100 fish, 100 fish per minute. Also in this area is the Semiamu Park Beach Walk. It has an extensive area of public tidelands, certainly one of the best places to go for a beach walk. Check tides for low tide times, follow the boardwalks to the beach overlooks and then continue out onto the tidelands and follow the incoming tide along both sides of the spit. This is a modern walk, um, 1.6 miles in circumference. It's a great place to do some shelling and just 
kind of get out and puddle around in the water. So one of the things we did not show was the Semiamo Resort. It's actually on the heel of the boot of this particular spit. And it's a tremendous getaway. It's complemented by a tremendous range of things to do uh, for adults and children alike. From world-class golf to full-service wellness center, delicious restaurant, beautiful beach with views across the bay, It's a great place to go uh, year-round. In the summer, you can do all the outdoor activities. In the winter, you can use the heated pool, the library, movie, and a bunch of other things at the resort's beautiful rooms. As I mentioned, we were staying at a campground uh, just a short drive from Semiamu. And you'll see in this um, Google Earth um, presentation here that it's just up the road from Semiamu. Located conveniently between Semiamu and Birch Bay is Birch Bay RV Park. It's a Thousand Trails Park situated just a few miles south of the U.S. Canadian border. The park does offer a swimming pool and it's located just a few miles away from beautiful saltwater beaches. Birch Bay, located just down the road, has water parks, miles of beaches, and a state park, great restaurants, world class resort golf course in the small town field. As you'll see as we go through the campground, it's, it's split in half by another piece of property and connected along this back corridor. Uh, we came in, it was fairly full. Um, there was a few places here and there to get and you'll see we'll eventually get a pretty decent campground. One of the things you'll notice about this campground is kind of the odd layout, uh, the way some of the campers are parked. They set up their water and electric and sewer in a quad distribution that are all located at the back of the camper. And for two of the campers, it's on the proper side for the connections. And then the other sides are really 
uh, more amenable to motorhomes that can pull in the opposite direction and still hook up that way. We essentially made a tour of the entire campground, came back around to the original area where we entered and found a site there. And as you'll see, I found a site on the left here, and don't mind the fence, we missed it. So over the course of the seven weeks that we were 
in Northwest Washington, we hit three different campgrounds. The next one is going to be Grandy Creek. It's actually a Thousand Trails KOA campground located at the base of Mount Baker. Grandy Creek RV Campground offers a gorgeous natural setting just a short distance from North Cascades National Park on Route 20 in Washington State. They have hiking trails, super friendly staff, and they're there to make you feel right at home. Offsite adventures are at your fingertips. You can take a day trip to Bellingham, the San Juan Islands, or British Columbia. Grandy Creek is located just outside Concrete, Washington. As you'll notice by the drive into the campground, it's a spectacular area. You get to see deep forests, mountains on both sides, and the Skagit River coming down through. They also seem pretty serious about elk. They have signs with flashing lights uh, about every five or ten miles, warning of the herds of elks. There is a nice turnoff sign for the campground so you can find uh, the road to turn onto. However, it then has this kind of crazy Y and a dead end road sign that takes your eyes off of the little bitty campground sign that goes to your left. Be careful that you don't miss this. The park itself is relatively easy to get into. Uh, they give good directions, good maps, so it's easy to find your site. And there seems to be plenty of room to navigate with big rigs. As with all the campsites out in the Northwest, it was extremely dry and they had signs up uh, for high fire danger. We had maybe one sprinkle the whole time we were there for seven weeks. As I mentioned, it was fairly easy to navigate through the park. It was one of our favorites actually in the Northwest. And you'll see Soki parked here on the left-hand side. The park itself had a nice pool. It had miniature golf. It had a very large area to play. Uh, there was a good clubhouse and a place to get your laundry. As I mentioned, uh, the Grandy Creek Campground is located just outside Concrete, Washington. And what we're going to show is the location of that uh, community. 
It's a unique Skagit Valley community located near the entrance of the North Cascades National Park. This tiny Pacific Northwest town makes up for its size with plenty of character, hospitality, natural beauty, and area recreation. You can explore Concrete's historic buildings and landmarks, go on annual ghost walks, or stroll through the summertime Saturday markets. You'll see here on the left one of the area's dominant landmarks. The Silo Park is a large-scale landmark. It was the site of Concrete's second cement plant, completed in 1908. There's a lot to learn about the local concrete Washington history. Early settlers came to Baker River in 1871, originally calling the settlement the West Bank Minnehaha. Concrete Washington history began in 1890 when the town site was platted by Magnus Miller. A post office was set up and the name Baker was adopted. On the east bank of the river, the community that sprang up around the Washington Portland Cement Company was named Cement City. After the Superior Portland Cement Company plant was built in Baker, it was decided to merge the two towns in 1909 and after much discussion, the new community settled on the name Concrete. Concrete has some very interesting main buildings. Prior to 1921, the several fires destroyed most of the original wooden buildings which lined the main street. Since concrete was in ample supply, it was decided that subsequent commercial buildings would be made from this non-flammable material. Historic plaques on, plaques on many of the buildings list their construction dates. Three of the oldest wood frame structures which escaped the fires included the Baker Street Grill, the Assembly of God Church, and the Town Hall. The main yard near Silo Park is the only surviving wooden structure of a business district called Superior Edition. It's appropriate that Concrete adopted the, the name because the concrete from this area supplied building materials for construction of the West Coast as well as materials necessary to support the Pacific War effort during World War II. As you'll see, this bridge is built from concrete, and it's quite appropriate. It was built during the construction of the lower Mount Baker River Dam and the hydro project you're going to see on your right that basically powered the entire area, including the mills. Our goal here was to head up to the dam site, which is up the first road that was closed and eventually the second one that we were going to try as an alternate um, and it had to be under construction while we were here. This bridge is actually quite a structure. As I mentioned, this area is a short drive from the Cascade National Park. So 
Concrete's first cement plant, constructed in 1905, um, was east of the Baker River, called then called Cement City. They had a limestone quarry on the hill to the north, and they used a conveyor belt system that connected the quarry with the plant in town that sorted over the village. From various accounts, it distributed dust over the entire area while in operation. The next place we're going to take you to is about 10 miles north of Concrete, Washington, and it's called Baker Lake. Located in northern Washington, the lake is situated in the Mount Baker, Snoqualmie National Forest, and Baker River Valley southwest of the North Cascades National Park, and it's fed by the Baker River along with numerous smaller tributaries. Baker Lake covers an area of 4,800 acres and holds up to 285,000 acre feet of water. Water levels fluctuate an average 39 feet annually. Formerly a smaller natural body of water, it was enlarged and raised 312 feet in 1959 in conjunction with the construction of the upper Baker Dam, a concrete gravity hydroelectric dam capable of generating 91 megawatts. As you see, the area is surrounded by magnificent old growth forests, stellar views of Mount Baker, turbulent tributaries, and of course, a beautiful lake. Hikers will encounter a forest of maturing Douglas firs. Cedars used to dominate. But in 1843, eruption of Mount Baker triggers a forest fire, reducing the old growth cedars to burnt snags. Cedar remains among the towering firs, providing evidence of this historical event. One of the things you'll notice, this is a spectacular area for views, tranquil. It's just a great place to just enjoy the scenery. You'll notice as we move up through into the forest, further uh, into the National Park, there's some uh, forest roads that you can uh, park in and then hike off to. Now, there's actually a turnoff that goes up into the backside of Mount Baker itself.
as we get closer to the Mount, Mount Baker recreation area, the elevation of the lake is 705 feet. Of course, it's right at the base of Mount Baker, which soars up to about 13,000. The lake is stocked with sockeye salmon, rainbow trout, bull trout, Dolly Varden trout, and cutthroat trout. You'll notice we get up here, we take a drive up onto the road that goes to the dam itself. We weren't able to get across it, but we were able to get to it. We turned around and came back down, but it's just at a beautiful vantage point. As we come back down, we'll make a right-hand turn, and there is a campground in this area. It looks like a pretty nice, uh, sizable campground, water and electric only. And then as you get further out, there's kind of an overflow area with no hookups. As you proceed further along, we'll come to this recreation area that is absolutely stunning. The views in this area is amazing, and one can spend hours relaxing on some of the benches, hiking, or just the clear blue waters of the lake, or look up towards the flanks of the summit of Mount Baker. You see the other Cascade Peaks off in the distance, but when you look at Mount Baker, it's just stunning right there next to you. You have to look up. The blue edges of the glacier stand out from the white of the large frozen masses of the glacier, and it's just stunning. I'm going to leave this quiet because it's just one of those relaxing views.
Thanks for joining us in this very special place. We leave you with Majestic Mount Baker. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe.